want to bring your kingdom down. You tried it, but we're still here. You tried it, but we're still standing. You tried it, but we're still praising. You tried it, but we're still shouting. Because you are holy. You are righteous, Father. You are holy. You are holy, you are holy Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. Over back in their cars at this time. And we want everyone back in their cars. 
This area is a restricted area. We will not be walking back and forth in this area right here. Thank you. They're coming around now. Please prepare your gifts. Oh, 
we come before you right now, Lord, with our gifts and our offering, Lord, to be pleasing to your sight. Let it be a sweet-smelling savor in your presence, Father, right now. We thank you for the gift and the giver this day, Lord. So, Lord, look down on us right now. Touch us right now in this hour. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Just to reiterate, we will be wearing our mask and, our, and, and using our sanitizer as we are going to be following the COVID-19 policies. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. And so we're going to make sure we're wearing our mask and we're gonna come here and we're gonna worship and praise together. Without further ado, I would like to uh, welcome our Bishop. Y'all give him a hand as he comes up, Bishop Donald J. Washington. <laughs> with our societal norms. We know that COVID-19, the coronavirus, is, is not racist. It can affect all of us. And the woman, bless her heart, she said we didn't have faith because we weren't mad, but she was after me. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to get the leader first. And I had to bind up that spirit in the name of Jesus. I, I felt she, so that she began to foam at the mouth all because we had to rebuke her. You do not come into the house of God and cause challenges in the house of God. This is God's house. This is sacred ground. This ground has been sanctified and blessed by God over 30 years ago. And we thank God. Uh, we pray for her. Hopefully that she would understand that God is not the God of confusion. He never do anything that is confusing. He's a righteous God. Again, we certainly want to thank you all for coming this morning. And we pray, God, that you continue to use social distancing when you're going out and about. And of course, obviously, you can see I don't have my mask on right now because I'm going to be preaching. But believe me, keep them on to make sure that while you're going to the market, touching things, be very careful. And we want to certainly thank uh, Minister Boston for the wonderful reading of our scripture for today. And we're going to touch on, on most of those scriptures because I want to talk about um, for such a time as this. What are we going through? I always try to use a, a text that is befitting uh, for what we're going through. And that was a great scripture with respect to Daniel uh, in terms of how he dealt with Nebuchadnezzar. And all we all know we have a Nebuchadnezzar somewhere around here, but we're not going to talk about that much. Again, I want to thank all the fathers and wish you all a wonderful Father's Day. I am happy to be a father. I love being a father. I come from a, a very uh, large family, and we always celebrate Father's Day. And my father would get so so um, emotional. He began to cry, and, and we, at, with 12 kids, we always give him oblations. And so today, make sure that we celebrate our dads today and let them have whatever they want and let them drink whatever they want, some of them don't get drunk. I'm just saying. Yeah, y'all don't honk your horn on that one. Because we don't, we don't drink. As the Bible tells us to forbid those kinds of things. But let's just look at Daniel, chapter three, but I wanna start with chapter one. When you look at chapter one, it's all about certain things that while the children of Israel was in Babylonian captivity, many of you read the, these words with respect to Daniel. And what happened when they was captured and they was in Babylonian captivity in chapter one is all about their walk because we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel, all of which are in Babylonian captivity in chapter one. But when they were captured, the chief, the chief of the eunuchs said that the king wanted young men that was fair to look upon, that was good with science, 
that were smart, and they picked out these brothers that were had unusual gifts. It was Daniel, which they changed his name to Belshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their original names is is uh, uh, let me see, let me get it right. Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah. Those were their original names. And they changed their names so that they would adapt themselves to the culture of the Babylonians. That was in chapter 1. Chapter 2 is when the, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. And he didn't understand the interpretation of that dream. And he used all of his, his uh, men of wisdom and all of his chancellors. And they wanted to come to interpret his dreams. And none of the magicians, none of the people that he had around him, the enchanters, they could not interpret his dream. And so finally, one of the eunuchs said, well, there's a young man by the name of Belshazzar. Why don't you call him? And he goes in and he begins to interpret his dream. And when he interprets his dream, he gives Daniel a high office. And as he gives Daniel this high office, he gives his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro gives them a place in the kingdom. In his kingdom, he brings them up to where he is. So here we are in chapter three. And we find out in chapter three, Nebuchadnezzar wanted to be so bold that he decides to build this great, big, huge, if you will, this, this great, this grand and glorious image, this thing that he wanted, an image of gold, whose height was three scores cubits and the breadth of it was six cubits. And he sat upon the, in the plain of Dura and in the provinces of Babylon. He has this great and glorious statue. Many of them believe that it is the statue of himself. It is an image of himself. And during this time, he said this had a wonderful dedication. This dedication, he brought all the people that he wanted to have be at the dedication. Matter of fact, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent a great together the princes. He wanted to gather them all together. The governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and the rulers of the provinces, and, and to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, set up. He caught, he caught all of the grand and glorious, the who's who, in Babylon for this big, huge dedication. Isn't it amazing? Here we have the dedication, but then there are some problems in this text when I looked at it. Not only the dedication, but there was a certain decree. He sent out this decree that everybody, when you hear the sound of the music, you're supposed to bow down and worship this image. And they had all kinds of music. They had, it said the king, they had the dulcimers and the lute and the flute, all these kinds of coronet heart, the sat, but the salty, the dulcimer, and, the, and all the time when the music began to play, they began to bow down and worship Hold the golden image. I got to shift my stand. Mm. Hold this for me. I wonder what kind of music it was. I mean, you know, in, in our culture, whenever we try to worship God, there's a whole lot of moving and gyration going on. That I don't know what would have been going on there, but anytime I think about music, if it's dirty, that I'll be dancing going on. I'm not saying what I'm saying. Because maybe that might have been the Old Testament Turk. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever they was doing there, they every time the music played, the setback, the touch, the, the psaltery, and the coronet, and the harp, all of were playing and they would bow down and worship the golden image. Now use your sanctified imagination. Here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that congregation. And when they begin to bow down and the music is playing, these three never bow down and worship the golden image. Isn't it amazing? You find the decree, the dedication, but here's the deplorables. All of them decided to follow the dictates of Nebuchadnezzar. 
simply because the decree was if you did not bow down to the music, mm -hmm. that you would be thrown in a fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Seems like in our culture, we have somebody that if you don't worship him, mm. he gonna get rid of you. It seems like we have some, some people in high places that if they don't acquiesce to his demands, he fires them. Mm. I wish I had a prayer in church here. Amen. There's a praise. Y'all know where I'm going. I'm not going to call him the president. I'm not going to do that. But every time the music played, those who are called by the plowshares of the gospel should not bow down to that, to vitriol, to racism, to systematic racism, all these kinds of things that are happening in high places. They didn't bow down and they did not budge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did not blend like silk and gold. That's what's happening in our culture. How in the world can you be a Christian and you serve someone who disparages the disenfranchised, the marginalized, the poor, the helpless, locking up children at the border. How can you be a king that you take mothers that are, that are lactating and feeding their babies and they take their babies from the mothers and you call yourself a king? They did not bow and they did not bend for such a time as this. Seem like this is something that has happened in the past and is happening currently. Because what happens when these certain Chaldeans in verse 8 in chapter 3 saw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who King Nebuchadnezzar had brought them to a high place of authority, they told King Nebuchadnezzar some words. Ooh, they couldn't wait to get to him. Notice what happens in chapter 3, verse 8. Wherefore at the time of certain Jews came near and accused the Jews that they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, o king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship Trump, I mean the golden mm -hmm. image. <laughs> and whoever falleth not down and worshipeth, that he shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee like Donald Washington. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Ron Matt. <laughs> <laughs> then they brought these men before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? <clears throat> After all I've done for you, you won't bow down. I brought you into a new area. Uh -huh. I gave you positions of authority, being Carson. <clears throat> mm. You mean to tell me, is it true that I had this decree and you defied the dec this decree and you did not bow? You did not blend and you did not budge? And notice their response. This is Andre Burke. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I set up. Now be ye ready that what time you hear the sound of the cornet, I'm not going to read all that, but verse 16 says, And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, 
We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And it will, and if he will deliver us out of thine hand, O God, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Mm. I wish we had some more Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Yeah. They said, we don't care. You might be king, but we serve a king of kings. Mm. You don't know what God has been into our life. Yeah. He kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even when they gave us our government cheese, God blessed us anyway. Right. I wish I had a prayer in church. Come on, Bishop. They said, if he does not deliver us, we still will not bow. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, verse 19, and from his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times hotter than it has ever been heated. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army that bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning furnace. But watch verse 21. Then these men were bound in hats and their garments and were cast into the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and that the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire flew and slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fire. Listen, notice the men that, that the king said, go get them. They throw them into the fiery furnace. Since it was seven times harder than it's ever been before, they got burned. Mm. They were slain by the far that they put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in. Can I just park here for a moment? Be careful who you try to throw in the fire. Mm. Yeah. Hashtag, it might come back on you. Yeah. Don't ever try to put somebody out and God has laid his hands on one. Yeah. You might get thrown in the fire. And the thing that I like about this text is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, notice, even though their names was changed, uh -huh. their nature hasn't changed. Uh -huh. They knew who they were. That's why I, I, we need to understand God has given us names. My name, my last name is not Washington. My last name is not Jones. Our last name is not Jackson. Our real name is not Miller. Our names really is Kuta Kente. Mm. We have African names. Uh -huh. You can take our names from us, but we still have our natural nature. Yeah. We are king's kids. Yeah. We come from kings and queens that discovered and developed no, mathematics and English and uh -huh. language and sciences oh, and Bishop. builders and all of that. They stole that stuff from us. So never be ashamed of your blackness. Mm. We are wonderfully and wonderfully made. Listen, they did not blend. Sister Washington, they did not bow. They did not budge. They did not bend. But guess what? They did not burn. All right. I'm trying to help this out today. When you stand for righteousness, you know that there's always, when we are here in this life that we call life, yeah. that all of us who live godly shall suffer persecution. Yes. But don't worry about it. Because even, even though I feel like preaching a little bit, come on, Bishop. Go ahead now. Even though.
they were persecuted. And sometimes you've been persecuted. But the Bible is clear said that those of us who live godly yeah. shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. But I can't leave Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. All right now. Because when it was in the furnace, uh -huh. all three was in the furnace. Yeah. King Nebuchadnezzar kind of peeped in. Looked inside of the furnace. Uh-huh. And he said, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I, I, I believe I, I threw <laughs> three men. Come on now. Uh, right now. In the furnace. And I remember their names was Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Uh-huh. But there's another in the flame. And it looks like the Son of God. Uh, come on. Have I got a witness? Yeah. We, uh, come on, Vince. You're in your fiery furnace. Don't worry about being in the heat. Because when you're in the heat and your life is in God's hand, Jesus will step in and look at your flame and say, cool it. Yeah. Anybody here know that when you is in your flame, the Lord stepped in on, at the right time yeah. and the right hour. Hallelujah. That's what you saw. Yeah. This morning, somebody tried to disrupt the word of God. But the saints begin to pray. Yeah. The saints begin to give God praise. Thank you. With praises. Jesus, the devil got to flee. I got to praise him right here because even though you're persecuted, don't leave the text because after the persecution and they came out of the furnace, they were promoted. You gotta go through some persecution before your promotion. Give God a praise because he's not ready to do it. Exceedingly above that for which you can pass or Glory. think Glory. in such a time as this. Give God a praise. Because even one Friday, when they thought Jesus was over with. Y'all forgot that yeah. one Friday. Uh -huh. I said, I'll run it back one more time. Yeah. They thought they was getting rid of Jesus. Uh -huh. One Friday. Yeah. They thought they was getting rid of Jesus. Uh -huh. one, one Friday. Yeah. He died. Didn't he die? Yeah. But right early, Sunday morning, uh -huh. not only was he promoted, but he got up yeah. with all power in his hand to have a witness. Yeah. Hold on, because everything will be all right. Praise his holy name in Jesus' name for such a time as this. You're going to be all right if you will. This is a time that we need to just settle back. Even though we see all these crazy things happening in our nature, in our culture, you're going to be all right. And if you're here today, you might be in your car and you would give your life to Christ. We're here because I want you to know if the sun When the sun don't shine And The wind Seems not to blow
all over the town. You're gonna be take our photo. Uh, we're praying that everybody gets home safely and have a wonderful Father's Day. We want to give another shout out to our fathers today. On Father's Day, thank you for what you do. We love you. We love you. We love you. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, his work now and forever. And we said amen, amen, and amen. Be with the end of the uh, driveway here. You think